This is the Arturia Polybrew. It's a polyphonic analog synth that costs just over 3,000 bucks. Arturia was kind enough to send this unit over, and I'm super eager to check out this synth and find out exactly what $3,000 gets you. Also, Arturia has just released new firmware for this thing, which, among other things, allows it to add various distortion effects, so we'll be checking that out as well. So first things first, this synth is massive, both in sound and in physical presence. This is Arturia's flagship synth, and it's clearly designed to be the main synth in a studio. Instead of just listing features at you, which never makes for the most riveting video, I figured we would just dive in and start making some music. I've got the synth hooked up to my computer, and on my computer I'm running Polybrute Connect, which is a plugin that's supposed to let me manage my presets and see all of the synthesizer settings. Of course, the Polybrute comes with hundreds of presets, many of which are very beautiful, but for the purposes of this video, let's pretend it doesn't. I find you don't really know a synthesizer until you really start making your own sounds with it. To that end, I've loaded up the init patch, which is kind of like a blank slate. As you can hear, it's just a classic sawtooth waveform. On the Polybrute, each voice consists of two waveforms that are blended together, plus a noise source. For each of these, we can choose a wave shape, and then there are a few parameters that allow us to further customize the sound. Now that we've got an oscillator sound we like, it's time to filter out some of those unwanted frequencies. The Polybrute actually has two different filters, and you can use these buttons right here to determine which of the filters gets used for a particular voice. You can also choose to use both filters. The latter filter is kind of like a classic Moog filter, so that's what we're going to use now. Next we have the envelopes, which allow us to shape our sound. This envelope controls the volume of the sound, and this one controls the filter we just chose. I want this sound to ring out kind of like a bell, so I'm going to turn up the release. Down here, there's this third envelope that can actually be used in conjunction with the modulation matrix. Speaking of which, this is the modulation matrix. It allows us to route the output from any of these modulation sources to any of the knobs on the synth. So let's do that. Let's take our very static sound and add some movement to it. I'm going to take the output of this low frequency oscillator and use it to modify the pitch very, very slightly. Basically, I just want it to sound like a tape deck that's slightly drifting in and out of tune. Okay, that's perfect. This is all I'm going to use of the mod matrix right now, but it's worth mentioning that this is actually one of the coolest things about this synth. Because just about anything on the synth can be modulated, including the modulators themselves, you can put together extremely complex patches. It's easy to spend hours just trying out different ideas, which is, of course, a ton of fun, but let's stay focused and move on to effects. Over the years, Arturia has released a ton of effects plugins, so it's not surprising that this synth would have a bunch of great sounding effects. Let's try out the reverb first. As you can see, there are a bunch of different reverb models to choose from. Okay, let's try out the delay. Obviously, there are all the usual suspects like chorus and phaser, but since Arturia has just released these seven new distortion effects, let's try those out. Cool, I think my favorite of these is the tape saturation. Now it's time to explore the most interesting feature of this synthesizer. You see this knob that says morph, and then on one side it says A, on the other side it says B? Well, each preset actually has two sounds. Thus far, we've only been building the A sound. I'm going to move this knob to B, and now we get to build an entirely new sound. So I'm just going to work my way across and just sort of randomly change knobs to produce a different timbre. Now that I've got my two sounds programmed in, I'm going to switch back to the A sound. And now we can use this expressive controller, which is called the Morphe, to morph between the two sets of parameters. It 
It should be noted that this is very different than fading between two sound sources. It's actually fading each individual parameter that got changed. A good way to visualize this is to look at Polybrute Connect, which is the software that comes with this synth. As I move the controller from A to B, you can see how each individual knob is actually getting moved. Using the Morphe controller, we're essentially playing those parameter changes as an instrument in and of themselves. So you may have noticed that as I'm playing this, I'm not just moving my finger across it, but sometimes I'm actually pushing down on the sensor. So you can actually map just about any control on the synth to that Z axis. Right now I've got it set up so when I push down, it messes with the effect parameters, which sends things into a wild frenzy. The Polybrute also has a sequencer built in. As I hit notes, the sequence actually shows up on the grid here. And you can actually go back in, add and remove notes or record automation for specific steps. It's very sophisticated. Once I like what I've got, I can trigger and transpose the sequence using the left side of the keyboard. All in all, this is a very impressive instrument. Of course, all subtractive synths are sprung from the same blueprint, the one Bob Moog and Herb Deutsch formulated in the mid-60s. And since they all have such similar architectures, people often compare them based on their specs. Maybe one has a few more oscillators, or slightly different waveforms, or better effects. Of course, in terms of features, this synth scores really well. The only real limitation that's worth mentioning is that it has a max of six voices. Whether or not that's an issue for you depends on the kind of music you make. For me, it hasn't been a problem at all. In fact, there's pretty much nothing feature-wise that I would personally want to add to this. But of course, the most important quality in any instrument isn't so much what features it has, but does it want to be played? When I see it in my studio, do I immediately walk towards it and start making music? Here, not only is the answer a resounding yes, the inclusion of the Morphe controller being able to actually play the parameter changes has caused me to interact with this synth in a way that's different from any other piece of gear in my studio. Anyway, I've gushed enough about this for the time being. It's time to go make some more music. If you enjoyed this video, now is a great time to subscribe to this channel. I've got a bunch of videos on the way. I think the next one's going to be about guitars, but we shall see. By the way, a great way to support this channel is by joining the Patreon. It costs just $5 a month, and at least once a month, I upload an exclusive Decent Sampler library just for patrons. And you can download those right from within Decent Sampler, which I think is pretty cool. Okay, I think that's it. See you soon.